The world we live in has gone through countless transformations. Have you ever stopped to think about how many have passed through this earth? And how many theories, philosophies, and inventions have emerged? The truth is that everything that exists today will be forgotten tomorrow. So it was with everyone who benefited from their strength, power, or authority in their time. But today, they're not even remembered. Everything passes. There is only one thing that has remained down the ages and throughout time that can never be destroyed. The Word of God. For millennia, Satan and his army have tried tirelessly to undermine and do away with the Holy Bible. A very small percentage of books survive for a quarter of a century. An even smaller number survive for a century. Here we can see that the Word of God is different. And if we consider how this book has survived, the fact becomes even more amazing. Kings, emperors, and nobles have devoted their efforts to getting rid of the Bible and exterminating those who believe in it. But everyone who has tried to stand against the Word has disappeared, and it's more alive now than ever before. Here are some examples. Diocletian, a Roman emperor from the fourth century, ordered that all copies of the Bible should be burnt. He had killed so many Christians and destroyed so many Bibles that when the movement stopped for a while, he thought he had managed to destroy faith in Christ. But later on, he died, having been mistaken. In the 18th century, the French writer Voltaire said, within 100 years, the Bible and Christianity will be wiped from existence and will end. Within 50 years, Voltaire was wiped out of existence and the Biblical Society of Geneva used his home to publish, print, and distribute thousands of Bibles. In the 19th century, Robert Henderson declared, in 15 years, I will have the Bible buried in the mortuary. Well, within 15 years, Robert Henderson was buried in the cemetery, but the Bible is still alive. Today, the devil's strategy is to ridicule the Bible by placing it on the same level as other books, trying to convince people that its teaching is old and outdated. But what we see is the opposite, because what is written has never been so relevant. It is much more than a book. It is the Spirit of God. It is the Lord Jesus himself. Therefore, if you have your life grounded in this word, nothing will be able to destroy you. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Recently, there have been many reasons which have caused human beings to cry. The loss of a job, being unable to work, a sick relative. It has not been easy. Do you feel that you are losing the ability to be positive? Perhaps your sleepless nights are filled with tears because your family is suffering. Perhaps you are heartbroken and suffering. But the time has come for you to put an end to all this. Look at what the Bible says. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? This Sunday, we will put all our sorrows and tears into God's bottle. Pay attention to these instructions. The first step is to use a tissue to wipe away your tears. The second step is to put the tissue into a bottle. This Sunday, connect to the Universal Church's online service at 10 a.m. and by faith you will put all your pain and anguish into the hands of God. This Sunday, 
a special prayer for all those who are crying. Nothing is more painful than being far from those we love. During this period that we are living through, this has been proved, but it is a certainty that those who are suffering the most at this time are those who are far from God. How long have you been away from the Lord Jesus' table? Who does not enjoy his love, peace, and protection? Be aware that today God is calling you to have fellowship with him again. Embrace this opportunity. This Sunday, participate in the Lord's Supper and receive the life of God within you. Prepare your bread and grape juice. At 10 a.m. Via Facebook, Marcelo Pires page. YouTube, UCKGARK and Univer Video. The walk towards an eternal life with God is not easy. Many begin, but few reach the end. And the truth is, the hardest thing that exists on the face of the earth is the salvation of the soul because there is a daily battle between flesh and the spirit, between rational faith and the heart's feelings. Unfortunately, many are worried only about being in the presence of God. But the secret is not only being in the presence of God, but remaining there. How many have begun the journey of faith beside you that are not there anymore? How many were used by God to save a multitude of souls that ended up losing their own salvation? What is the point of being in the church for 10, 20, 30 years, but becoming discouraged and giving up? In Gideon's time, 32,000 presented themselves for battle but only 300 remained. From the 10 lepers who came to Jesus and were healed, only one came back. From the 500 who saw Jesus before he ascended into heaven, only 120 preserved in the Cenacle. So then, what needs to be done to persevere till the end? Having faith and a good conscience, which some, having rejected, concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. It all depends on a good conscience. That is why Satan works to soil it with malice, bad eyes, and deceit, as he knows if the person is contaminated, sooner or later the person will sink. We are living in the end time. There have never been so many giving up their faith as in our own days, fulfilling the words of Jesus that the time would come when the love of almost everyone would grow cold. The greatest glory someone can have in this life is to say at the end of it, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Our God, our Father, in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, we come before your mighty, glorious presence, my Lord, believing through our eyes we can see you, our physical eyes see the physical, the material, 
but the eyes of our faith, we can see you, my Lord, through your words, through your promises that never fail. Heaven and earth is passing, but your word remains forever. Your promises will fulfill each and every day of our lives. Right now, this environment of this world is revealing the fulfillment of your prophecies. You only those who are connected in faith in a spirit can understand my Lord. So please I ask you speak to your servants. Speak with their sisters with the, the members their friends their relatives any person that is watching us right now here in South Africa or throughout the world whatever my Lord this broadcast is hitting let your mighty power come upon this house this life and let my father what is missing to be edgy in their lives. Please, I ask you, rebuke all kinds of evil that try to diverge this person from the moment of this meeting. Any kind of evil that try to, to take their attention for not to be attentive for what you have prepared for them. Please, my Father, bless each and every moment. From this moment until the end of this service. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will believe in my Father. Your power and your promise. Present your life to, to God right now where you are. At home. You are alone. You are with friends your relatives, your family members, talk to the Lord right now. Present your life the way you are. He accepts your prayers. Talk to Him. My Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be in your presence, connecting the same faith in your spirit with your servants. So may your will shall be done, my Father. Bless abundantly in Jesus' name. Come to supply, provide. For each one of them, what they need. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good day for all of you, our sisters. Good day, Pastor Roger. Good day, Pastor Walter, all the assistants. And we are you, everyone who are connected right now. I don't say that it's just one meeting, one more meeting. I, I can say that always when you have this broadcast, not only especially for our sisters, but all the broadcasts that has been, you know, been available for everyone. This is a gold opportunity. 
for for your salvation kwenzelwa insindiso yakho for you to invest in, in your future ukuzeke usebenzele usasa lwakho because what is a future how many people right now do this lockdowns they have a brand new car but they cannot drive they cannot go to the freeways or the highways and let me go wherever you want if they have a yacht they cannot go they cannot use it So they have a nice beautiful office it une cannot of, go to work. Une office ke enhle kodwa ukwazi uyemsebenzini. So I don't say that is it wrong you have a property and, and you be rich. Angishi ukuthi kuyinkinga ke ukuba nezinto zakho futhi nokuceba. What I try to say that Pastor Roger that this kind of material or physical world that you are living It's like this any time it can stop. Maskuluma ngezinto eziphathekayo noma unini nje konke lokungamiswa. And he has been stopped with a very very small and minuscule you know uh, virus. Futhi lokho kuvinjwa nje inchalo ngane encane ke. That very interest that when you wash the hands for 20 seconds with soap it it dies. Indo ukuthi mawugeza ke izandla ke ntsipho ke ivesani ife. It vanish. But if you, if you enter through your eyes, through your nose or through your mouth, inside your body now is a problem. God mangange nake emzimbeni wakho isukibe inkinga. And the governments in the world, oh hulumende bomhlaba wonke, they only allow people to buy the essential. Bavumela abantu bathenge okubalekile. Doesn't matter if they have millions in their bank account kunganandaba ukuthi banegidike kuma bank account wabo they can only buy that much bathenga nje lokho kudinga kalayo and this meeting talks about the essential futhi ke lokho kukhulunywa ngalokho kubalekile not for the body hayo komzimba but for our spirit for our soul kodwa okomphefumu lo futhi nomoya wethu for the future usasa lwethu because the future is after when you will give our last breath ngoba usasa sikhulumaka ngesikhathi uphefu mlo kokugcina now it starts the future manje ke fika uqala ke ukusasa lwakho the eternal life impilo enguna phakade in order to to help you to understand it, let's watch this short video that we have prepared for you i want you to pay attention with the details of this video and you'll be right back asibukele le video ke sibonake nemininingwane yale video so phinde sibuye meanwhile you can you can open turn your bible there in the book of of Matthew chapter 8 from verse sorry Luke chapter 14 from verse 15 to 24 ungavula ke u Luke chapter 14 from 15 to 44 Luke 14 we'll be right back Certainly the greatest curiosity of man is what will happen to him after death. For centuries man has been seeking answers to this matter. There are many books and movies which try to depict life after death. Theories and discourses on this theme which confuses the human race. Is it possible to know how our lives will be in eternity? You will follow these and other topics here on the mysteries of eternity mysteries of eternity On today's episode who will come to fetch your soul The Bible is full of revelations about life after death The Lord Jesus was one who spoke most about it giving in detail 
things that will happen after giving our last breath. Certainly, Jesus' most revealing discussion concerning eternity speaks of two men who had different destinations, the rich man and Lazarus. Who hasn't read or heard about them? But there are many secrets in this holy text that at times go unnoticed by many. And one of them is, so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Here, the Lord Jesus left it clear that when we die, someone will come to fetch our soul, either angels to take you to heaven or demons to take you to hell. But what determines who will be sent to fetch us? What determines is whom you are serving during your lifetime on earth. If a person chose to obey the word of God, deny his desires and his will for his love for Jesus, then he is the Lord of that soul. But on the contrary, if he preferred to live far from the will of God, fornication, addiction, grudges, lies, then automatically the devil becomes your Lord. Therefore, when the person dies, the Lord of that soul will come to fetch him. Every second, two people in the world die. Both the rich and the poor die. Both the famous and the unknown die. The young and the old die. People die of old age. Others die from sicknesses, while others die from disasters. The problem is not to die, nor the manner in which death comes. The problem is, who will fetch your soul? Whom have you been serving in your lifetime? Who is the Lord of your soul? Imagine the joy of seeing angels on your side ready to take you to meet the Lord in the air. However, imagine the despair of those who didn't believe and who chose to live according to their desires and sins when they come across demons to take their souls to hell. And if they don't make a pact with the big man, I will take them. They don't know that when the body detaches from the soul, that they carry on with their skeleton, I will come to get them. There are people who didn't believe you exist, but during a time of death, they see you. People who said that you are what fanatics of the Bible believe, but they see you. What is their reaction when they see you? <laughs> and that's where eternity starts, either with God or without Him. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you, then whose will those things be which you have provided? If you pass away now, who will come to fetch you? Next episode. It is said that we take nothing with us when we die. However, there are three things that a person takes with him after death. Very well. I hope that you have it watching and notes it. This is just, you know, a, a short video. Qui video But based upon the reality, Pastor Roger. Having now your Bible turning the book of Luke. Chapter four, uh, 14 from verse 15. Let's now understand much more from 
in a profound way what is about the angel of a life of someone in this world in the beginning of a new life in an eternity masifundeke sizwe ngokujulile ukuthi kubanjani kwimpilo ke yomuntu oshonayo futhi ayengale kwimpilo enguna phakade because the eternity can be in two ways impilo enguna phakade ingaba ingayenzeka ngendlela ezimbili with god ungaba ube nonkulunkulu or doubt god okanye ungabi nonkulunkulu let's read together asifundeni sonke now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things and he said to him blessed is the is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of god then he said to him a certain man gave a great supper and invite many and send his servants at the supper time to say to those who were invited come all things are now ready but they all with one accord began to make excuses the first said to him I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excuse it. Another said I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant Go out quickly into the streets the lanes of the city and bring in here the poor the the maimed and the lame and the blind and he and the servant said master it is done as you command and he still have he still there is room pastor roger just when we stop there I have to read everything in order that that you can have a clear idea. Begomele sifunde konke ukuzeke uzwe kahle. And this parable in true is is a prophecy that is about to take place. Lo lo mzekeliso ke kuyinto ke ezokwenzeka cishe. And you can see partly of this prophecy se abona okunye kwalesi prophet already being fulfilled se kwenzeka namanje because you a sister myself a pastor anyone who who receive the word of god one day and you got conversion noma ngubani ke wathola izwi likaNkulunkulu futhi ke waguquka and you really understand now that one day it it to happen the angel of everything we are just ukuthi ngelinye ilanga kuzokwenzeka ukuthi kuphele konke that the lord jesus will return as he his, he promised ukuthi unkosi jesus uzobuya njengobethembisile so once you receive you have it you gain this understand mase ke uba nalolo lwazi you start now to evangelize ukala manje ukuvangela you you have that that great desire inside of you to pass on what you receive ubanale sisifiso sokuthi undlulisele kwabanye lokwakuthola how many times you 
Kuganga kike M7 zinuwa kumzegelo At school Eskoleni Your neighborhood Oganye mpagatini Or even you went to your homeland Oganye waye makaya And everyone that you know Or even some people that you never You never met Wongu mundo mazi yoge oganye abando ngagazu wa sanga na nabo but you know feeling with that desire to people to know about the the salvation utweleke ngalo ngalo lesi sifiso sokuthi abantu bazi ngensindiso and you go is start to pass for the person look do you know that this 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 which is going to happen one day so and after you say you pass you 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 make the invitation uqala ke ubachaze ukuthi niyazi ukuthi lokho uzokwenzeka emveni kwalokho uqale ummemeke lo muntu you become a little bit frustrated ekhambeni kwisikhathi sikuxakeke because how many people after received the invitation they start to give excuses bangakha abantu ke mawuqala bamema bakunikeza ke izathu and this is the first disappointment that we have in the christian faith we receive the good news we are excited to share with others and we believe that the same way as we accept it everybody else will accept because we see their situation but we receive excuses pastor just like it happened in the in the scripture njengoba kwenzekile kimipa njengoba kubhaliwe three that three represent nations represent all kinds of people in this world labathathu ke bameleke izizwe na yonke inhlobo yomuntu ke ophilayo lapha emhlabeni in this excuses sometimes you don't know how it it happened how the person can can maybe uh, reject Uh, you know a such a great invitation because yes ukuzilandula akwazi ukuthi kwenze kanjani ukuthi umuntu anqabe nje ithuba nje elinje you know the the master has prepared the great supper umphathi sekalungise isidlo esikhulu and i want to just to in a point uh, there's a dot there in this that when the bible says great You can imagine it's not just oh come yes. to my come to have a dinner with me. Uma i Bible little okukhulu ngacabanga ukuthi akusuka ukuthi hayi izanje uzodla nami. And it's for free. Futhi kumahala people don't have to pay anything. Akothoke go rubatale but still they give excuses. Impa batho bana le mabaka. And how to like you to you want to just to illustrate. Ukwenza nje ukuthi mbona. Try to help people to understand what do you really want to people to to have a clear uh, picture ukuze abantu bakwazi ubona kahle about the the message today ngalomlayizo wana mhlanje satan is the one who is behind your all these excuses usadana nguye ke ongaphezu kwakho konke le izathe engekho without people notice that ngaphandla kwabantu ukuthi baqaphele because he is spirit ngoba umoya wakhe we cannot see spirit asikwazi ubona umoya and then he brings into he starts for example in the might see this picture here Pega as we are talking njengoba sikhulu look this picture beka lesi sithombe pastor rosh how can this person think about the invitation from god umuntu onje angacabanga kanjani ngokumenywa ngunkulunkulu there are so many thoughts going on in his mind miningi micabanga ifika eqondweni yakhe problems mathatha family problems mathatha lilapha financial problems mathatha dichelete worries oyikhathatha the last thing he's going to think about is god into yawuqedela kanahana angayona ke mudimo this is there are the demons there bring so many things taught you know diverging the person from the the real life e tsa hore motho a fapohe mo bophelo mba nnete from the real future or a fapohe mo bokamoso mba nnete because the future my future your future your future sister bokamoso ba rona you know what's the future la itse hore bokamoso ba rona king 
is to go to the cemetery. One day you're going to die. Yes. Of course, if the Lord Jesus returns before, he he just, like uh, today, uh, or just coming week, we never know. Yeah. So now the rapture will take place. But besides that, if the rapture doesn't take place, all this generation, if Jesus doesn't return now in 10 years, 20 years, or 50 years to come, we don't know. So all of us now will make die. Yes. And now the eternity will begin. It will begin, and then you need to to be ready for that. So Satan knowing what he does, can you show the picture again, please? He put that. He makes sure people be busy, Pastor. And a person like this is only think about here and now. I need money now. Accounts. I need to get married now. I need a house. I need, I need, I want, I want. Just with the physical and material world. And now, uh, what happened after this? The, the devil, he does this with the person. That is just a picture. Look now. Pega. We have people right now living like this. Carrying a heavy, you know, in a shoulder, it's so heavy. Is a heavy burden. Everything for this person try to do is say, I never succeed, I don't overcome anything. They think it's so heavy, so difficult for me, Pastor Roger. Is this this is the this is the picture? And this person is hopeless. Because he has tried everything. Doesn't work. Tried again. Go to another place, homeland. Come to the big city. But there is a load on his shoulder. How can this person overcome anything, Pastor? That's why when to come the word of God. Right now, maybe there are people even watch and say, ah, this is a boring, boring subject. Okay. Pastor, you are speaking about this, this is a word of God, but my its stomach is empty. I have no money in my pocket. And I, you know, right now I am jobless. I have no job. That is I come back to the first picture. This is what the, the devil talking to you now. No job for you. No marriage. So he keeping talking. He keeping feeling the mind of the people. And two, you go to the last speech of Pastor Roger. Let me give you some time assistant to figure out what you can see there. That person is empty. Inside there is nothing. Because he was so much worried about the outside, the physical life, there is nothing that can feed this person inside. This is the person who wants to leave the church if they are in church. Want to commit suicide. suicide. This is the assistant who gives up. Who comes to the pastor with the uniform and says, No, it's not for me. Ah, it's too much. You know, my, I, I, I'm so heavy. Go back to the second picture. Maybe it's like this. See, the Eve is not inside, but he comes with. Burden. He make a person to feel so heavy. His mind is full. Full of worries. He becomes so, so anxious. 
the things of this world. And the end is the last picture. Avoid is now created inside the place. Yes, why a person is so empty now? Because the principles of faith, three things. Reading the Bible. Have your moment to God, your personal prayer with God. Fast against the challenges, the difficulties, the problems. The Lord Jesus guarantee. It's not me, it's not Pastor Roger. We'll say to you, a sister, oh my dear, fewer. Aksum Pastor Roger and you Pastor Walter about Kulumagnina Manji. It's the Lord Jesus. Good Jesus. He's written there. There are problems who only be solved out. When you be vanished away from you. When you pray. When you fast. But these have to be in faith. Have to be not with, with you know, uh, uh, waiting someone to come and say, no, come here. Sorry, Pastor Roger, come here, my friend. Uh, I go to Lindu Moon. To no, don't worry. This I thing will change. Things will be better. Easy, you know, everybody suffer. No. You have to get the revolt against this situation. You have to accept the invitation. Of the King of Kings. Do you remember last, last week we spoke about that the door can be shut? If this is your last invitation. If today is, is the last day of your life. Oh, even the Lord Jesus will return. Let's go back to the message, the last verse, verse 15. See what it says there. Look, 14, verse 24. Now, uh, one before, sorry, 23. Then the master said to the servant, Go into all the highways, reds, and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Why? Because the servant said, Lord, we have done what you command, but you still have there is still there is room. There is room. This room it means it still has have opportunity for you. Though you, you maybe you, you find yourself, you know, if you look at the pictures, you say, that is me. Can you go back, please, for the picture one by one? So maybe you are like this, your head is like that. Maybe you are carrying a heavy Burden, you are like this. You already have the void. We, we, you are wa. so desperate now, though you are a sister. O, agegi, legu, manje, u, u, you are a member, you, or maybe you are for the first time receiving this message. O, ya, al, u, u, zwa, Pastor Roger, lies. what is the word for them? Is you? Still, there is room. It seems to be impossible to come out of this situation. But one thing is needed to accept the invitation. You see that the master wants. Yes. He even said, Pastor Walter, compel with them. What yeah. Insist with them. Because there is still room. That's why we in the evangelism, we go, you knock the door once, twice, three times, you insist. We we'll call for interview. We we'll do one meeting, another one, the second one, night, night videos. videos. All this is the master, is the master tell you. Is still 
is room. There is room for you. Lise kona ikumbi laku. But let's continue here. The last verse says, 24. For I say to you that none of those men who are invited shall test my supper. In other words, one day, they are going to have no room. When you say, still there is room. But if you take time, if you continue keeping rejecting the invitation, the rooms will finish. As they, let's go to Matthew 8, 11, 12 for us to finalize See what the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus said there. Matthew 8, 12, was born to Jesus in love. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom, that stop right there. The sons of the kingdom. Who are they, Pastor? Go Bambuso. The sons of the kingdom are those who have already accepted Jesus. Because if you go back to that message, hmm? see that the, law, the master prepare the supper. Uyabon. Not for strangers. Uyabon. He prepared the supper for the sons. The sons. He was the son. Maybe one day you, you came here. This is the water baptism here. The place, the pool, where you baptize the people. Or, if, or if you one day you came in the church, you left, you, you, you reject, you now. You know the pictures, I don't go to go back there, but now your mind's like this. You, you are in that situation. It's still there is room for you. But it's not forever. Because if you die, how are you going to end in the, in, how are you going to attend the, the supper, the great supper? Which means that no one is guaranteed yet, Pastor Walter. None of us. We were saved. We are saved. We will be saved. saved. If we remain, if we obey until the end. So my dear, finalize verse 12. I don't know if I, if I have it ready or ready. I think I'd like to go back there. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into other darkness. There will be wiping and gnashings of teeth. Imagine the sun people are supposed to sit in the table in the great supper. The chosen ones became the condemned ones. This is profound. So, my dear, I make this invitation. I told you to prepare a table. A white table here. This table. Maybe you prepare your house. A white table there. This is to make you to remember that this table means purity, cleanness. So right now, it's time for you to be purified. You're washed through this word today. Take an opportunity. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, 
all of us will be connected. I, I believe in the previous meetings, even Bishop spoke last Sunday concerning this. Can you please place the, the message concerning the tears and what you're going to when it take place happening tomorrow with the cheers of the people. So the verse in the Bible is very clear that you have been showing throughout this week and you have been teaching concerning that you, you are going to do exactly what the Bible says there that you what you have to do here is my, is already my bottle here. I have, I have been with God in his, cry out to God. Pastor Roger did the same. The sister, anyone watches yes. can do that, Pastor Roger. Yes, in Psalm 56 verse 8. In verse 8. God says, I mean it says, you number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? So, two things in this passage, Pastor Walter. What is to wonder? Is to walk around without direction. Maybe this is what the lockdown is doing to people. Maybe not going out, walking around. But you have no direction. You don't know what's going to happen. But after that, it says that God put our tears in his book. Which, which means he registered them in his book. He cannot forget. He can't forget. When you put, when you write something, why you write? Because you don't, you don't want to forget. Yes. For this to be remembered. So do that. But how are you gonna write? No. You know the right way to to express your your life, your everything, in, pour out really yeah. whatever you want to say to God through the tears. So if you can't, have an hour, excuse me, have an hour, a tissue. Let's pray now. If you cannot do it now, you do after. It's tomorrow at 10 o'clock. You have to present it in the service. I told you that sisters, everyone, to prepare your element. Prepare the elements there. Keep it for tomorrow. You won't participate now. What you wanted to do now is to bow down and talk to God. Pour out, you know, your tears. Be sincere. Purify yourself. And say, Lord, I accept your invitation. I want to take part, to partake of this Great supper. Everything will, be, will change, Pastor, Pastor Rush. As it would have changed for those who were invited by the Mass. Everything was prepared. But it, it does not depend on God anymore. Now it depends on your decision to abandon whatever is blocking your spiritual life. To leave behind the, the world of material needs and make your spiritual life your priority. This is what will make a difference in your life. Let's now 
talk to the Lord Jesus. And before you pray, I'll, I'll show to you now below the, the account of the, the the bank account of the church. Because tomorrow is the, is the day of, of the mothers. If there is a mother, the spiritual mother, the church, I can't forget the day I came to the church. Do you? The years pass by, yes. but you can't forget the day you arrive. In, in that way, I arrived with that picture there. My mind, can you show the picture again? My mind was like that. Yeah. You know, I had that void. I had that heavy burden. In the church here, in the universal church, that all this has been Vanish away from me. Who did that? The master. I accept his invitation. I didn't reject. So, it's an opportunity for you. You can prepare your, your offering. As you pray, Talk to God. God, what do you want from me? And then you, you send it to this account there. There is the account bank up here there. Take notes. Make your transference. Or even on Monday you go to the bank, you make your deposit. That represents, you know that God, I return, I want to offer to you what I have. A generous offering. Something that you, so generous from you, you genuine, something that you decide, not someone told you to do, oh, do this. Now you are going to decide between you and God. Let's make it now our life to be pure. We prepare the elements. We are going to bless. And tomorrow at 10 o'clock p.m. So 10 o'clock a.m. We are going to be together. Bishop Marcel with everyone we're going to connect. All the pastors, the pastor's wife, sisters, the members, everyone in one spirit, one faith. I'm sure after the service, you, you want to be the same person. Pastor Roger. Yes. So prepare yourself now. And a, a very important thing, Pastor. When the church is open, we have the habit of preparing ourselves the night before. The assistant prepares the uniform. Everything is ready the night before. Let's, let's keep this habit. Nothing has changed. The only difference is that you won't be physically here in church. But the spirit is still the same. Your house become the church. Yes. How many people say, ah, I'd like to have this peace here in the church. In my, as I have here in the yes. church, I want to have in my house. Now you have. Now you have. Now, inclusive, you can put your Bible there, get the cheers, put in the bottle, lay it on the Bible. And many people passed out. Mm -hmm. They say, I wish the pastor could come to my house. <laughs> we are coming to you every day. Now. Every day. Let's talk to God now. He ain't ourselves. Okay. Stay the way you, you wish. But think about what the Holy Spirit spoke to you today. Let's talk to God. Our Lord, in the name of Jesus, we see these meetings that we have as an opportunity, my Father. 
we don't know who we are preaching to we don't know all the assistants we don't know their family members but you know and because you know you give us this direction my father to offer this person an invitation to come and sit at the table in the kingdom of heavens with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So my father, I pray now that this person who used to have so many thoughts in their mind, who used to carry a burden, maybe my Lord, the burden of a sin, that sin has been following them for a long time. As a result, this person is empty, void, hopeless, weak, downcast. My Lord, at this moment, remove this burden, my Father. Remove that voice that was talking to them, saying, you are nothing, you are wrong, you whatever that voice was saying I commanded to get out to leave them right now Holy Spirit you are the only one who can make us feel light you can remove this void and you can fill us inside my Lord in such a way that our faith will bring the results that our minds were worried about so bless this person my father bring hope, bring strength, bring the assurance that regardless of what will happen tomorrow, next month, next year, when the moment comes, this person will be with you forever, my Lord, and sit at the table with the Lord Almighty. Yes, my Father, and, I, and now you can understand your word says that you are the same God. The same yesterday, the same today, and you'll be forever. When you go through your word, when you see the people of Israel, you use your prophets to, to call your people to the same spirit, the same vision, because in that times, my Lord, people also got lost. They start to, to be engaged with idols, other kinds of gods, customs and traditions and so many things that they start to diverge from the faith. And you urge them through your prophets. If you don't stop that, the enemy will come and you, you take you away, you die by sword, you buy that by plagues. So, so many calamities came upon Israel. And today, Lord, this world is facing the calamity as well. There are so many, there are different ways, but they are, their suffering has been the same. If the source of this suffering is not different from the past. And you have been the same one, always being so patient, full of mercy, inviting us to come back to you. You have invited us to remain in faith. So therefore, my Lord, Accept this prayer. Give this person now this second chance. Perhaps has been astray for years. Or this sister may be wearing a uniform, but inside there is the void. This person is, is no longer as, as before. Renew their faith. Forgive their sins. And let them to sit on the table. It's supper with you. In the name of Jesus, be forgiven. Receive forgiveness now. Ask the Lord, my Lord, forgive. Make a vow. 
with the Lord that from today on you are going to listen and you obey to his word. You are going to put his word into practice. That you won't reject the invitation. Come back home, my friend. Come back to Jesus. Come back to his kingdom. You are the son of the kingdom of God. Don't allow it. No one take your place. Still, there is room for you. So accept, surrender your life. In the name of Jesus, my Father, bless them. With this, we close our meeting and we stretch out your hands toward your servants, whatever they are. Receive forgiveness, receive strength, receive power, receive right now. Do not allow nothing to diverge your faith, your vision, your focus in the kingdom of God. Receive salvation. Receive God once again. The spirit of the living God is on you. Jesus' name. Everyone believe, say amen and amen. Amen. We just arriving at the end so where is are the elements zip is in dog is funegayo lift you up right now is pagamise my father we ask you to bless the grape juice the bread tomorrow every, each one of us will be in the same spirit the same faith at 10 a.m. and you partake of the holy communion you let everybody, my Father, to sit in the table in your kingdom. No one be out, but everyone to be, my Lord, in spirit and faith, in communion with you. Amen and amen. You are blessed. Have a blessed end of this Saturday, this day. See you tomorrow at 10 a.m. All right? Our next meeting, we'll let you know. God bless you. Bye-bye. Recently, there have been many reasons which have caused human beings to cry. The loss of a job, being unable to work, a sick relative. It has not been easy. Do you feel that you are losing the ability to be positive? Perhaps your sleepless nights are filled with tears because your family is suffering. Perhaps you are heartbroken and suffering. But the time has come for you to put an end to all this. Look at what the Bible says. You number my wanderings. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not in your book? This Sunday, we will put all our sorrows and tears into God's bottle. Pay attention to these instructions. The first step is to use a tissue to wipe away your tears. The second step is to put the tissue into a bottle. This Sunday, connect to the Universal Church's online service at 10 a.m. and by faith you will put all your pain and anguish into the hands of God. This Sunday, a special prayer for all those who are crying. Nothing is more painful than being far from those we love. During this period that we are living through, this has been proved, but it is a certainty that those who are suffering the most at this time are those who are far from God. How long have you been away from the Lord Jesus' table? Who does not enjoy his love, peace, and protection? Be aware that today God is calling you to have fellowship with him again.
Embrace this opportunity. This Sunday, participate in the Lord's Supper and receive the life of God within you. Prepare your bread and grape juice. At 10 a.m. Via Facebook, Marcelo Pires page, YouTube, UCKGARK, and Univer Video.